Okay, so let's proceed our lecture on CMOS design using logical effort techniques. So in the previous um, topic, we have looked at um, basically a logical effort technique that we have been doing uh, for inverter chains. And now we extend the technique um, to analyze uh, um, circuits with, with logic gates other than inverters. Okay. So chip designers face a bewildering array of choices. Uh, what is the best circuit topology for a function? How many stages of logic give the least delay? How wide should transistors be? Logical effort is a method to make these decisions. Uh, uses a simple delay model, allows back of the envelope calculations, and help make rapid comparisons between the alternatives. So example here. Um, so there's a guy called uh, Ben Bit uh, Bit Diddle. Uh, he's a memory designer for the Motorola. Uh, 68W86 embedded automotive processor. So uh, we want to help Ben design a decoder for a register file. So uh, he needs to design uh, the decoder for a register file. So he needs to design this block here. Okay, he needs to design this block. Uh, register file is there. So what is the spec of the decoder? It has to be a 16 word register file. Uh, each word is 32 bit wide. Each bit presents three load of three unit size transistor. We have a true and complementary address input A A three zero, which is here. So you have A three zero and A three zero bar. Um, each input may drive ten unit size transistors. Ben needs to decide how many stages to use in the decoder. How large should each gate be? How fast can it operate? Okay. So basically, what the decoder does is it gives an address, and um, uh, based on the address we are going to uh, fetch uh, the file from the memory or the register file. Okay, so, so in designing the decoder, there's some logic gates inside here. How many stages of logic should he use? Um, what is the size of each uh, transistor in the, in the logic? So we have seen this already, the optimum fan out for a chain of N inverters driving a load CL is uh, simply F is equal to the root of N of um, capital F, where capital F is the overall fan out, CL over CG1. Uh, can the same approach be used for any combinational circuit? Because we did it for inverter. So for a complex gate, we can expand the inverter equation given here, we've seen in the previous one, uh, to TP equals to TP0, P plus GH over gamma. So what is the difference between this equation and the inverter one that we've seen is now we have the term P okay, uh, here. And we have the term GH here. Okay, so for inverter, for example, uh, P is equals to one. Okay, and then we have um, uh, F uh, is equals to GH. Okay, um, and and that is for the inverter. Um, so so, uh, but when we extend to logic gates, uh, then our P can be different. Okay, so this is different. Um, for logic gates. Okay, so for logic gates, our G is going to be different, our H and our P is going to be different. So, um, so we're going to look at the terms here, what, what is each term. So, uh, TP0, we have seen, so TP0 is actually the intrinsic delay of an inverter, we can assume it's a constant number. H is the effective fan out. Okay, so last time C external over C gate is, uh, we call it F. Okay, but now it's not F anymore, so um, this is called H. Okay, so, so H, um, uh, H, H, is equals to, H is equals to C extrinsic over C gate. So it's not F anymore, and this is actually called the electrical effort. P is the ratio of the intrinsic unloaded delay of the complex gate and a simple inverter. So P here also known as a parasitic. Some book, uh, they call it the... The, the parasitic so um, for inverter the parasitic equals to 1 uh, if you have different logic gates it's a higher parasitic and finally G is, is what is called uh, the logical effort of the gate okay and, and for inverter uh, G is equals to 1 in fact. okay so, um, so so G equals to 1 and that's why for inverter you have uh, your F is actually equals to H okay for in the case of an inverter Okay, so um, 
So intrinsic delay term P, so let's look into detail what is actually P. So uh, P, remember, is actually the, the parasitic, okay, uh, relative uh, parasitic, uh, <laughs> relative to the inverter. The more involved the structure of the complex gate, the higher the intrinsic delay of an inverter. Okay, so, so remember the, the intrinsic delay term P, if you go back to the definition, is the ratio of the unloaded delay of the complex gate and a simple inverter. Okay, so um, basically if you don't have any load, what is the delay of the inverter? Um, what, what is the delay of the gate relative to the delay of the inverter with zero load? Okay, so in this case, inverter equals to one. Okay, um, because itself, relative is itself, is just equals to one. And, um, and, and, and here is it's quite important number here to know is um, for n input nan, n input no, the parasitic or the intrinsic delay term P is just equals to n. And then for n wave multiplexer 2n, x or x no, 4. Okay, uh, in this case, they ignore the second order effect such as the internal node capacitance. So it's a, it's a quite rough uh, kind of estimation. Okay, what, what is G? Uh, so G, logical effort. So we've seen that the, for the inverter, G is equals to 1. Okay, you can see here in the table. Uh, so G represents the fact that for a given load, complex gates have to work harder than the inverter to produce a similar response. G is the ratio of the input capacitance of a gate to the input capacitance of an inverter delivering the same output current. Logical effect of a gate tells how much worse it is at producing an output current than that of an inverter. So, so here, um, for example, the, the logical effort for, for inverter is 1 and the logical effort for a two input a two input nan okay two input nan is uh, four over three so what is saying there four over three is one point three three um so uh you can say that the two input nan requires around thirty three percent um uh, more power um uh, more effort thirty three percent can say uh, uh more effort um to uh, produce the same output current as uh, the inverter at uh, p mos and mos ratio of two. Okay, so this is another assumption that we make here that p mos and mos ratio uh, is equal to two, and um, uh, and and how much more the gate has to work uh, in order to get uh, a similar speed uh, response to that of an inverter. Okay, so important numbers to know 4 over 3, um, but, but for, for a NOR gate, okay, uh, interesting to see that um, it requires more effort, so 1.60, 60, 60%, eh? so, so the NOR gate requires roughly 60% more for a 2 input, and F, as, we, as we increase the input, we can see that the logical effort actually increase. Okay? Uh, for multiplexer, it's all the same, and then for XOR, 2 and 11 over 3 for a 2 input and 3 input XOR. So let's look into more detail on the logical effort. So assuming a PMOS MOS ratio of 2, the input capacitance of a minimum size inverter is 3 times the gate capacitance of a minimum size uh, NMOS. Okay, so using the inverter as a benchmark. So um, uh, what is the okay, so what what is the uh, the the gate size or so the, the, the gate capacitance? Um, of the of, of the inverter, so so the gate here is uh, uh, in terms of unit, okay. Uh, so it, it's just two plus one, okay. On the on here you have two, and here is one. So the, the total gate you can say like the gate capacitance or the relative uh, gate capacitance on the inverter is is three, two plus one on the input, and then um, for a two input then, okay, and if. If we make the following sizes, so we have the um, p effective. Okay, so p effective is two. Remember, it's the worst case, the worst case size or the worst case uh, transistor that it goes through. Um, so the worst case uh, either one, and and here your n effective here is is actually two times two over two plus two equals to uh, one. Okay, so um, so here we have the same ratio. Okay, so here your beta equals to 2. Here is also um, beta equals to 2. Okay, 2 to 1 ratio. Um, 
but your uh, logical effort is is uh, four over three. Okay, uh, how how we get four is is because uh, for example in the input A we have um, uh, the 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 size here is is two and the size here is two. Okay, uh, so we have two two here. So so we can see that um, for the two input NAND gate. Um, the 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 capacitance size, okay, the gate size or so the capacitance size is four, and um, for the inverter is three, okay. So so you can see it's, it's around thirty percent more. It's a thirty percent more bigger size, okay. We uh, we using uh, we are using thirty percent more size on the gate four versus three to get the same current, okay. To get the same current on the output node with beta equals to 2. Okay, so let, let's look at the the NOR. Okay, let's look at the NOR. So the NOR again, we are looking at to get 2 to 1 ratio. So here is uh, 4 times 4 over 4 plus 4 is equals to uh, is, is equals to um, 2. And here the worst case, okay, uh, P effective. And your N effective here is equals to 1. Okay, so we have a nice 2 to 1 ratio. So we, we can assume that we're going to have the same current as the 2 to 1 uh, inverter. Um, but now, um, this is 4, this is 1. Okay, the A is connected here. So your, your C unit is 5 and your, your G is uh, 5 over 3. Okay. Okay, so... Okay. So let's see the delay as a function of fan out. Uh, delay as a function of fan out. So what, what it's doing here is is looking at the normalized delay versus the fan out. Um, how many output is is connected to for the gate? Okay. So um, if if the fan out is zero, unloaded. Okay. So unloaded fan out zero for inverter. Let's look at the inverter. So we have a, a relative delay of one. Okay, um, for unloaded, and as we increase the fan out, okay, um, as we increase the fan out, we can see that the delay actually rise linearly, okay, it, it rise linearly, and the slope um, of the line is actually the logical effort, okay, the slope of the line is the logical effort, and that's why you can say that the logical effort here is is constant for uh, a, a, a gate. For a gate, for a certain gate size, for a certain gate size and type. Okay, so for a certain gate size and type, for example, uh, a two input NAND, a two input NAND, your logical effort is always going to be four over three. Okay, assuming P MOS and MOS ratio of two. Uh, also for inverter, your G is always going to be equals to one. Okay, regardless of what happened, your G is always one, always four over three. And that is the slope given by the normalized delay versus fan out. So the y axis intercept is the intrinsic delay. Okay, so here is your intrinsic or your parasitic, your P. Uh, can adjust the delay by adjusting the effective fan out or by choosing a gate with a different logical effort. Gate effort, remember, is, is, is F is equal to GH, also called the stage effort. So then we can expand this to look at the path delay of complex logic gate network. So total path delay, total path delay through a combinational logic block is given by uh, TP0 sum of P plus HG. Okay, so remember last time uh, for inverter we have a 1 plus F, 1 plus F and now it's P plus HG. So the minimum delay, so the path requires that each stage should bear the same gate effort. So um, H1, G1, H2, G, G2, and so on, till HN, GN. Consider optimizing the delay through the logic network. How do we determine A, B, and C sizes? So it's quite similar to what we did in the, in the inverter chains, um, but now we replace the inverters. Now we can have a three input NAND, we can have four, five inputs, um, mix of inverter and other gates. Um, so assuming all, everything here, now we are assuming the designs are in static CMOS, okay, the classical standard static CMOS rather than um, the other design styles or structures. Okay, so let's derive some equation here. The path logical effort, capital G, 
So capital G is the product of the individual G in the line. You see the example later. Okay, uh, the path effective fan out um, is H equals to CL over G1. Okay, or the path electrical effort. This is quite confusing when you say the path effective fan out is, is almost like a definition of F. Um, but I, I would prefer this definition, H. Okay, H is the electrical effort, is the load divided by the input uh, capacitance. Um, the branching effort accounts for a fan out to other gates in the network. So branching effort, we'll see the example later. The path branching effort capital B is a product of the small b. The total path effort is therefore F equals to GHB. Okay. So uh, if you remember last time we have the capital F for the inverter is just uh, equals to CL over G, G1. Um, but now, uh, so, so CL, CL over G1 is, is actually the electrical effort, which is just one term there. And here's your branching effort B, and then you have your logical effort G. Okay, and it's given by uh, product of all the G's and product of all the B's. So then we have the minimum delay to the path is D equals to TP0 summation PJ plus NF to the power 1 over N divided by gamma, which is simply TP0 capital P plus N capital F 1 over N over gamma. Okay, so how wide should the gates be uh, to obtain the least delay? Um, so here F equals to G H I. So G is your logical effort of the gate, as I mentioned, is um, is supposed to be constant. Okay, it's a, it should it should be it should be a constant value, uh, and then you have C out over C in. Okay, and C in can be calculated like this, and C out can be also calculated like this. Uh, working backward, we apply capacitance transformation to find input capacitance of each gate given the load it drives. We can check the work by verifying input cap spec is met. Um, just like we did for the inverter. Working forward, apply capacitance transformation to find fan out capacitance of each gate given load as input. Check work by verifying output cat spec is met. Okay, so um, for the example, we'll uh, uh, I think we'll continue in the in the next video.